Seat belts won't save lives in every crash, but there are many where they can. We now know a lot about what happens to unrestrained human bodies in car smashes. These slow motion pictures show what can happen to children. These injuries can be severe enough, but American research has found that poorly designed children's car seats may actually increase the severity of injuries. Car crashes are the commonest cause of childhood injury. Many other causes get more public attention, but you go to a children's hospital or an ordinary hospital with a child's ward and you will see many children lying there with injuries, injuries suffered in car smashes. Dr. Michael Henderson, of the Traffic Accident Research Unit in New South Wales. Children are particularly vulnerable in car crashes. Uh, their particular construction at their age makes them so. Uh, for instance, they have a soft skull. They're very likely to head injury and facial injury. Uh, they often fly upwards in a crash, hit the roof uh, with tremendous force, uh, and their incidence of head injury is extremely high. Are there many devices for accommodating children in cars on sale in Australia today that you would say are unsafe? There are devices offered, certainly, for seating children in cars which are unsafe, yes. Just how safe are the car seats offered for sale in Australia for children? For puzzled parents, there's a bewildering array to choose from. Shops still stock the cheaper seats because this is all some people say they can afford. The words safe, protective and padded often appear in the brochures. This seat is designed to fit bucket or bench type seats. It features a so-called unique safety stay for use as a nursery or picnic chair. This little car seat featured a steering wheel and squeaker horn. The manufacturer claims this seat's plastic covered brackets protect the car's upholstery it doesn't claim to protect the child. Occasionally, a manufacturer will be quite dogmatic about his product. Just how safe is it to rely on the safety claims made in advertising brochures? We took a random sampling of children's car seats currently on the market to the Traffic Accident Research Unit in Sydney. For years, this was the most widely used type of child's car seat in Australia. But how safe is it? Dr. Michael Henderson. From the safety point of view, it offers nothing. It, 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 a cheap uh, gadget offered for the comfort and convenience of a child. But it adds nothing to its safety. And because it raises the child up into a dangerous sort of area, it might, in fact, add to danger. I can see little point in offering equipment for children in cars which does not increase their safety in a crash. What could happen, would you say, to that seat and the child in it in a crash? There's very little doubt what does happen. Uh, the child's centre of gravity is comparatively high. In a crash, the seat unhooks itself and, complete with child, flies forward, becomes unrestrained and may indeed go right through the windscreen. Now, for the two or three dollars that someone would spend on that seat, how could they spend that same amount of money on a better safety feature? If, they, if a parent just had two or three dollars to spend and wanted to greatly increase the child's safety, he could do no, uh, no better than to install a simple lap belt in the back seat. Looking at that particular seat in that car there now, could you say quite categorically that some children sitting in seats like that would have been killed because they were sitting in those seats? I'm sure there must have been instances of this, yes. Now, the manufacturer of this seat recommends that the car's seat belt should be used to give added safety. This is essential that the car seat belt is used in this sort of seat. Otherwise, it is subject to the same disadvantages. However, it is possible to combine the car's own seat belt with the seat, lock the seat comparatively securely, and then the child is restrained by a harness on the seat. If someone spent between 10 and $15 on that seat, would you say they were investing their money wisely? Well, this does offer some safety. There are features which are, again, illusory. This padded bar offers nothing and could be well be dispensed with. It, it's of no value. And in, I would favor uh, 
insistence that the thing is used with the car seat belt because without it, it offers nothing, no more than a two and three dollar seat. This tubular framework also enables this car seat to be used as a nursery or picnic chair. This uh, framework below the seat here is designed to stop the seat tilting forward as one of the dangers I've already commented on. Uh, whether it does so depends an awful lot on the strength of the seat squab. In addition, a feature I don't like at all is that the seat itself depends for its integrity on being fastened to the seat squab by a simple piece of nylon moibing. It's not attached to the car. The seat squabs are often not strong enough to take the combined load of a baby and the chair in a crash. This may be approached 2,000 pounds and, and many seat squabs won't take it. This seat would be safer if combined, as before, with the car's own restraint system. If that is done and the child wears what, in this case, seems to be quite a good little harness, this lot's done away with, this offers nothing, then this wouldn't be a bad compromise. This car seat retails at $21. The name SAFE is in the trade name, and the manufacturer claims that it will pass the Australian standard when it's introduced. The manufacturer says it has a very high degree of safety in operation. Dr Henderson, what's your view of this car seat? I think this seat would provide considerable protection for a child in a crash. A few of the features which I like about it, it has a wide harness which helps to distribute the load. It has a, a catch which is difficult for a child to undo, but easy for an adult. The seat as a whole is anchored very securely to the car's body shell. That is, it is bolted to the car and won't come adrift. This is the most single, uh, the single most important factor, and I think this seat is a, a generally good one. It is a misconception that children have to sit in, sa in children's safety seats. For instance, for the expenditure of almost no money, children of, say, four years and older can sit on a firm cushion and use the adult seat belt. This offers just as much protection, much greater convenience, at very little cost. The impact sled at the GMH Safety Design Test Centre at Lang Lang near Melbourne. Tests on this equipment have shown that some children's car seats on sale in Australia have failed in simulated collisions. Chief Engineer and a Director of GMH, Mr Bill Steinhagen. We've tested quite a few on our sled at Lang Lang. Uh, we were interested in trying to be sure that we had a seat which could be offered that would provide uh, proper restraint for a child in the event of an accident. So I would assume we've tested perhaps uh, 10 or 15 different child safety seats. This is the slow motion action of an unrestrained child in a collision. GMH has not released the films of tests on other manufacturers' products but we've been assured by GMH that it will make the results of its tests available to individual manufacturers if they seek them after this program. Included in those tests were children's car seats that hook on over the back of the front seat. What did some of the tests show? Now, every seat we've tested which does not provide restraint to the actual car structure has been very ineffective in terms of an accident. For instance, the type of seat you just mentioned, the ones that hook on over the back of the front seat. We find that invariably these come loose, the child will slide forward, and actually probably suffer more injury than they would if they were unrestrained. Any time that you put a seat in where you utilize only the car seat, you will find that it's never as satisfactory because our seats weren't designed for this type of application. This is a child's car seat developed by General Motors in America. These intersection collision tests at the University of California examined the problem of how best to restrain children against the effects of collision forces. The preliminary investigation established that special restraints must be provided for infant and child protection. In this 30 miles an hour impact, the unrestrained bassinet nearly ejected the infant. To provide suitable protection, the scientists found, bassinets must be aligned with the car's long axis and securely tied down. 
the seated three-year-old was thrown violently forward in this 30 miles an hour collision. But in this 40 miles an hour collision, the child was held in a safe position by her harness. This child's car seat was designed for a Swedish car. It sold as an accessory in Australia for that car for about $50. The passenger seat is turned around to face the back and the child seat secured to it. The chief test engineer of the Swedish company is now in Australia. He claims this way of carrying a child in a car is safer than the devices available in shops. In a collision, the force is dis distributed over a huge area because our medical advisors tell us that the bone structure of a child is too weak to take the concentrated pressure from a belt here or there. Uh, that's the main reason, I would say. Cost can limit the appeal of a safety device. These seats were installed this week. They cost $21.50 each. The manufacturer of these seats is satisfied they'll meet the requirements of the Standards Association of Australia. But the real test would be to subject them to a simulated collision with a dummy instead of a baby. This is a car hammock and the trade name includes the words safe and baby. The instructions that come with it say you can carry your most precious possession, your baby, in complete safety and comfort in your car. Uh, this new car hammock is a revolutionary departure from all previous methods of baby transport. So simple, yet so effective. Well, Dr. Henderson, what's your version? I'm afraid I don't like it at all. Let's just take a, a simple example of, of a frontal crash at, so, let's say, 20 miles an hour, a slow speed urban impact. Baby, cradle and all, swing up forwards. Nothing's going to stop the baby hitting the roof at 20 miles an hour. Now, Children are very susceptible to head injury. They've got soft skulls, and the commonest part of the car for them to suffer injury against is the roof. This, this to me, offers no protection whatsoever. However, there is a way of, of offering a baby of this sort of age quite considerable protection, and that is to put them on the back seat in a carry cot, a bassinet, which is preferably covered with a net of this sort, which are available, and then restrain the bassinet by the car's own lap straps. This offers quite good protection for babies up to six or eight months of age. Much better than this. This pamphlet claims that in a collision, sudden braking, or any other emergency, a baby is protected against all shock. The manufacturer is hopeful that the Australian standard will be reviewed to accept this device. Now, you've read that pamphlet. What do you think of the safety of that car hammock put on a Holden motor car? Without testing this, of course, I'm only giving you my subjective opinion, but what I see of this pamphlet indicates that the hammock is restrained by the gutters on the outside of the vehicle. Now, these gutters were designed to carry water away. They were never designed to withstand the loads which a child in that hammock could induce on these gutters in the event of a severe accident. This is another type of American device for carrying babies in cars. This is what happened to a dummy in an American test. A similar thing happened to this little boy on Wednesday night in Sydney. Brett is 19 months old. He was unrestrained in the car, but his injuries might have been worse had he been sitting in some types of safety seats that hook over the front seat. Children offer a particular problem, that is that they grow, and when the, the, the smaller they are, the faster they're growing. So one has to look at this problem in, I think, four stages. The first is the babe, the baby in arms. Probably the best compromise, as they're not interested in looking out of the car, is to put them in a bassinet on the back seat, anchor the bassinet and cover it with a net, some of which are commercially available. The next stage, with the toddler, 
best put then in perhaps in a harness which is worn before the child leaves the house. And then this harness itself uh, is fitted to a strap bolted to the car. Next stage, up to the age of four, five, six perhaps, one of the better types of car safety seat uh, which we've discussed today. After that age, it is best that they are rapidly accustomed to the use of the restraint system which is fitted into the car for the use of uh, adults. For several years now, motoring journals have been warning motorists in Australia not to buy some of the more dangerous types of car seats for children. So one notes the carelessness, or is it cynicism, of manufacturers who go on making them and of the shops that go on selling them. This morning I suggested to one manufacturer that he take his product off the market until it could be proved scientifically whether it actually fulfills the sweeping claims that he makes for it. He said he wouldn't because he couldn't afford to. Yet three recognised authorities on car safety have said that they won't accept that manufacturer's claims about his device until they see them proved scientifically. This dummy was unrestrained. Some children's car seats may actually increase the injuries. Those car seats will still be on sale in the shops on Monday.